Welcome to the Legal Networking Forum. My name is Christine Mantilla with South Coast College. This virtual networking event brings education, local resources, and connections to the community. We value creating great business relationships, opportunities, resources, and creating connections. My guest today is John Corcoran. John Corcoran is a co-founder of Rise25, which helps B2B start podcasts. He's also a recovering attorney, a writer, author, father of four, and a former Clinton White House writer and speechwriter to the governor of California. Throughout his career, John has worked in Hollywood, the heart of Silicon Valley, and ran his own boutique law firm in San Francisco Bay Area, catering to small business owners and entrepreneurs. So welcome, John. Let's begin. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, Christine, thanks very much for having me. Um, I love, you know, that you are helping um, legal students in the legal community. I think that's awesome. I practiced law for a bunch of years. Um, now what I do is I help B2B businesses to start um, podcasts and to do it for business development, for networking, for creating content, that sort of thing. But years ago, I was practicing law and I just started by creating a podcast for my legal practice. Thought, and I found it was an amazing tool for connecting with clients and referral partners and strategic partners and business owners in my community. And, and I've loved doing it ever since. So that's what we do now. So how did you find podcasts in the midst of being an attorney and working in law? I know, right? Yeah. No, I mean, I just like started listening to other podcasts. Um, I knew some people that did some podcasts and it was just at the time people were, were talking about it and I was curious about it. I'd done a little bit of uh, radio in college just a tiny little bit. So I live into the background. My dad actually had done radio um, when he was younger too. So kind of had that background. So I was just kind of curious about this new medium, but you know, I started super simple. I just literally emailed a, a good client and said, Hey, I'd love to interview you over the phone or over. I did video Skype at the time, recorded it. Didn't even know how to do anything with it at the time. Didn't know how to upload it or anything. Basically kind of figured out a way to upload it to my website. But after that, he was like, hey, that was a lot of fun. Um, I got some more legal projects that maybe you could work on. And I was like, well, it worked really well. Let's keep on doing this. And I've been doing it ever since. Very, very cool. So can you talk a little bit about the Hollywood, the writing, the White House, the, off to that? Like, how did Yeah, you yeah. I have a weird career path, weird career trajectory. So I grew up in L.A., uh, north side of L.A., San Fernando Valley, Calabasas area, you know, a Kardashian country, as, as <laughs> some people call it. Um, and uh, I, I worked in, in a little bit in politics and a little bit in Hollywood. So I worked for DreamWorks a little bit in college. And um, I did an internship in the White House uh, speechwriting office and uh, ended up going, then went to college, uh, UC Santa Barbara and graduated, and then ended up getting a job at the White House as a writer in presidential letters and messages. I kind of like refer to it as like a second string speechwriter. Like we wrote all the stuff that the speechwriters didn't want to write. Um, and so it was great. You know, I mean, I was 23 years old. I had a BA in English and I was writing the president's words, which is pretty cool. Um, and I loved it and then went on to be a speechwriter for a governor of California and then ended up going to law school because I working in politics, you work with a lot of lawyers and a lot of people who have law degrees. And um, if you haven't been to law school like me, you tend to lose arguments to them. And I was like, you know what? I think I need to go to law school. So that's how I ended up going to law school. And I also knew that, you know, getting a legal degree, I didn't know exactly what I would do after college uh, or after law school, uh, but I knew that having a legal degree would really help me to figure out the world. You know, I knew that the people that had law degrees, they could figure out problems. If they didn't have the answer to the problem, they could probably figure out what the answer was. And so I thought that was a great reason to go to law school. Very, very cool. All right. Well, small business owner, entrepreneur, how did that fit into... Yeah. So, I mean, basically I was, I was working for another law firm at the time, small firm. Um, this was around the time of 08, 09 kind of financial uh, meltdown and it was a real estate firm. And um, so we had a lot of these real estate investors that came to us and needed help with these different properties that were underwater that were, you know, having problem going to foreclosure and stuff like that. And I was just kind of doing it independently on my own within this firm. And I was like, you know, I could do this on my own. And I'd always been curious about starting my own business. And, um, so I just kind of said, all right, I can do this on my own and literally started my own firm. Um, I, I got an office in the same building, one flight up. So my commute was exactly the same, except I went up one flight more. Um, and some clients came over with me and I put the word out and other lawyers, you know, to be helpful to me would refer business to me. And I just kind of made a go of it. 
Um, and then it, my business kind of evolved from there. So I started a blog, I started a podcast, and eventually that became its own business in its own right. And there were other things that came out of it. So I started doing paid events and I started selling digital courses and I started selling, um, you know, books and things like that, that came out of the blog, came out of the podcast. And then eventually we came around to kind of where it started, which was the podcast and helping other businesses to create a podcast. And that's, that's where we are today. And that's our focus today. Yeah, that's awesome. So can you tell me a little bit about how you met your partner and how you guys first yeah. started helping the first few businesses and what that turned into? Sure. Yeah. So my business partner, I, we kind of known each other through the, through the world of podcasting. He'd started a podcast even before I did back in 2009, 2010 time period. And actually he was, he and I were both going to a conference and he reached out to me and said, Hey, I'm coming into town for this conference. Let's do a small event beforehand. Maybe like gather a dozen people together. We'll just exchange ideas, different business owners. So we ended up doing that. And um, it was a lot of fun. We just really enjoyed doing it. And so afterwards, you know, during the conference, we kind of talked about it and we decided to do another one and another one and another one. It kind of eventually became our, our, our business. And then fortunately, before COVID hit, before the pandemic, I'd had a couple of kids and I was like, you know, I don't want to travel around all the time and have to get on an airplane in order to, you know, get a, a check basically to get paid. And so I knew we wanted to change our business somehow. And around the same time, a lot of people are asking us about podcasts, how to start one, how to make it profitable, how to help, help it support your B2B business. And so we started helping people and it just kind of took off and it became something that a lot of people wanted from us. And so that became our primary focus. So that's, that's how we uh, ended up uh, starting this business. That's so great. And so when you did that first one or the first, the second one, you helped that business, how hard was that for you guys to go from your own podcasting experiences to teaching them how to do it and make that successful for their own businesses? Teaching them wasn't hard. So, you know, talking with people about the strategy, talking with people about the, you know, how to leverage it, um, you know, answering basic questions, you know, like, do I need a huge audience in order to do a podcast? Do I need a title? You know, how do I do cover art? You know, those types of fundamentals was not hard. What was harder was realizing the other things that our clients needed in order to be successful. So now what we do is really three different things. It's strategy, accountability, and production. And we, we built the team on the production side and it's gotten bigger and bigger and we've added more and more people. And that's created a lot of complexity. So that's been challenging. And then accountability is not easy too. How do you know, how do you hold someone accountable? You know, some people like people like to be held accountable in different ways. You know, how do you make sure that they get done what they need to get done in order to be successful at it? And especially if it's a mix of you doing it and them doing it. So those those different pieces have been challenging, created its own challenges. And I don't think we do it perfectly. You know, there are some clients that, you know, need more and we don't do enough or it's 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 kind of an art, right? To, of, of holding someone accountable. It's like a personal trainer. How does a personal trainer hold you accountable? Right. You know, like some do it better than others. Right. You know, so, so that piece is a, is a constant um, challenge to figure that out with, with each individual client. Um, and just kind of like figuring out that our business needed these three different pieces, strategy, accountability, and production in order to get the best results for our clients. It, it definitely took a, little, a few years to figure out that that's the, the right mix of different services that we needed for our clients. And when your clients take off and go, um, do they usually find that they're able to surprisingly do this after you walk them through it somehow you're their partner yeah. with them? Like how did, how does, what's their reaction? And yeah. I mean, that's gotta be the coolest parts, you know, cause you know, their people have like certain objections. They have certain things that they think are going to hold them back. And, you know, we can tell them beforehand that, you know, that's not going to be a barrier. That's not going to be a challenge. This, these, you know, you're actually going to get good at this or you, you, you'll get better at it. And then seeing people actually get that, you know, get better at that is really cool. You know, like a lot of people say like, oh, I don't have enough time to do this. Um, or, you know, how am I going to get people to say yes, to come be a guest on my podcast? And, 
you know, we help them through that. We help them, you know, with ways to position it in order to get people to say yes and who you should ask first to come on and how you get them to introduce you to other people in their network and how even how do you ask questions, you know, and what if, you know, what should you do afterwards to follow up with that person and to deepen that relationship further so that you have other ways to collaborate, you know, all those different things we help people with. And it's really cool to see people start to get that kind of traction. And then that's where, you know, they can focus on the highest and best use of their time, which is just having great conversations, meeting new people, having, um, you know, getting introductions to other people beyond that, that those, those past guests know. Um, and, and then we can handle our team, handling the production, all that kind of stuff, can handle all the behind the scenes so that they can focus on the parts that they enjoy and the parts that, that they, you know, are uniquely good at. And so, yeah, that's, it's really enjoyable when we get into that phase of the working relationship together. That is incredible. So how about for choosing interviewees? How do you, how do you do that? How do you choose an interviewee and what is um, your hope for yeah. attracting the audience? Well, so that's um, actually the first thing that we focus on because, you know, ultimately um, I say to people, your network will grow. And this gets back to networking, which you were talking about earlier, your network will grow, whether you do it intentionally or not. Because we drop some people, we add some people, we meet new people, right? You know, we get introductions to other people, go to a party, we meet someone, right? That's, that's happening all the time. But we can be really deliberate about it. And um, so there are some people that start a podcast and don't really think that through. They just kind of willy-nilly take anyone. And that affects how your network grows. And if you've got objectives for your career, your business, or you want to Let's say you want to be a judge. Let's say that you want to have a big practice, you know, whatever it is that you want to have for your career, you should be deliberate and intentional about it. You should look around in your community, you know, whether you want to work your way up as an, an attorney or, you know, maybe go in-house one day. Think about what are your goals? Like, you know, if you want to go in-house, well, maybe you should, you know, go and there's no better use than I can think of of your time, but interviewing, you know, in-house counsel. Right. And asking them about their journey, asking them about how they got where they are today, asking them what they would recommend that you should do. If, you know, if they were in your shoes, what would they recommend that you do? You know, that is a tremendously valuable use of your time. So it, it, who you should interview really is dependent on what your goals are. What do you want to do with your career? Where do you want to go? You know, so that's where I start with everyone. Like, you know, what are your goals? That's a good, hard and simple question. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, and, and it evolves and changes. Like the other thing is that it, it might change from year to year, right? You know, like we, our preferences change, you know, we, we decide that, you know, this path isn't for me, you know, like you, your passions change your interests change your life priorities change, you know? So you have to constantly be going back and, and thinking that through again and thinking like, is this serving me? You know, who are the people that I should be connecting with? And then looking for opportunities too. I mean, like you might, interview someone and, and then that person offers to introduce you to someone else who you didn't yeah. know before, didn't expect. And those kinds of cool opportunities come along and you, you got to take those opportunities, but also while being clear on, you know, what's the right opportunity for me, you know, what, what's the goal, like, what's the objective, you know, because, you know, I've been doing a podcast for now 12 years and, and I have a lot of, you know, PR people and book marketing people that send incoming emails, get dozens of them a week, you know? And um, I mean, yeah, I could interview all those people, but is that the right goal, right? That's really serving their goals, not mine, right? Is that the types of people that I want to be networking with, want to build relationships, want to, want to connect with? So you have to be a bit selfish thinking about what are the people that I want to really focus on? That's great. That leads me to my next you know, question. What motivates and passion or what motivates you and um what do you have passion for when it comes to these podcasts and your, your people that you're bringing on your podcast and sharing with the community? Yeah. Um, what motivates me? I mean, I, I love the team we built. So we've got some great people working for us who really enjoy what they doing, what they're doing. Um, so that's really motivated internally, externally, you know, helping, you know, interesting clients and, in, in showing them the ways that they can, um, you know, use a podcast in order to, get access to people that they wouldn't otherwise get access to, deliver value to people in their network, 
deepen relationships with clients and referral partners and strategic partners, um, and and really think about um, ways in which they can grow their network. That's super exciting for me. You know, I mean, I say to our team sometimes that, you know, it's it's like we are redefining the way that networking is done. You know, networking. Part of the reason I think people get a, a negative connotation with that word is because they think of it as something that's manipulative or taking advantage of people, or so often you're asking people for a favor before you've given any value in, you know, like, can you meet me for a informational coffee? Well, the successful partner that you asked to do that is busy. They charge a lot for their time. Um, you know, it's very difficult for them to do it. They have to drive across town, sit down for a coffee. Like that's a very big inconvenience and you are indebted to them when you're done versus yeah. using a tool like a podcast, you're actually delivering value to the other person. Even if you don't have a tremendous amount of exposure, you flow it, throw it up on YouTube, you know, or you put it up on, you know, Spotify or something like that you're giving that person exposure, it's going to be up on the internet forever, right? So yeah. that that's sharing their wisdom with the world. So you're actually giving value to someone rather than taking value to them, you know, and, and from a networking standpoint, that's a much better strategy, right? Like, yeah. you know, if you're going to network someone, if you can give them something, you know, they're going to, what ends up happening is you will get a lot of people who want to repay the favor. So, um, you know, I found when I was doing this for my legal practice that it just, ended up turning into more referrals, more introductions, more connections, meeting, you know, great people um, because I was leading with delivering value to people rather than trying to take something from people. Yeah. What a great concept. So you do think of those things as I have to shake people's hands and they're going to sell me and that's it. But right. You. Yeah. And that, and I mean, I actually, you know, I'm kind of a dork, but you know, bef before the pandemic, I, I liked going to stuff like that. I like meeting new people. Right. But having said that, I, I like an efficient use of my time. And if I can do it from my office and I can meet, you know, what I found is that over time you meet more people, it's more targeted and you build more relationships. If you use a tool like a podcast, um, you don't have to travel across town. Um, you don't get stuck at like a, a networking event, talking to someone that turns out is not a good fit at all. And you're not quite sure how to like get out of that conversation, you know? Instead, you can be very deliberate and, and surgical almost in, in being deliberate about who you want to connect with. You could go to, you know, like your school, like your, your alum could go and they could look at an alma mater list. They can look up like, you know, who's someone I should connect with that uh, went to the same university as me. That's a great strategy, right? You've got that in common, right? You know, and then use that to network. Like you go and interview one of them and you say, hey, who's a classmate of yours who I should be talking to? you know, and that they introduce you to three people, right? You know, it really opens doors and it's easier for people to make those introductions when it's for the purpose of content creation, rather than it's for the purpose of inconveniencing the person on the other time, on the other end, who's going to have to do, you know, a, um, uh, you know, a, an informational interview at a coffee shop or something like that. It sounds horrible to me. <laughs> I don't know why. I love meeting people too, but you're right. Uh, me yeah coffee shop, waste your time. What if they are a horrible fit? It's true. Right, right. So how do you continue to learn and stay on top of your role, um, you and your partner and what you do? Um, I mean, part of it is just like interviewing people for my podcast. I mean, that's probably like the best professional development tool I have out there is you know, meeting interesting people and having the opportunity to ask them questions. I read a lot too. I listen to a lot of podcasts as well. I've got, kind of gone through different phases where there were periods of time where I didn't listen to a lot of podcasts. Now um, I, I walk around with, I have it right now. I have like earbuds around my neck at all times um, that are charged and ready to go. And so if I'm walking to the car or I am doing the dishes, cleaning up around my house or anything, like I have dead, dead time, I'm, I'm going to put the earbuds in and I'm going to listen to a podcast or listen to an audiobook or something like that. And that's how you can kind of squeeze in a lot, you know, cause I'm, I'm, I'm constantly, you know, looking at, um, you know, so evolving changes cause things are changing pretty rapidly. I, our, I feel like our technology, the COVID has accelerated the pace of change, um, by many years. And so, you know, if you're in the legal industry, if you're an attorney, if you're a legal professional, 
in, in, in particular, you, you have to be kind of aware of the changes that are happening. I mean, I graduated from law school in 2007 and many of my classmates went straight into document review and that's largely been replaced. You know, I mean, like people don't do that as much anymore. There's optical character recognition, there's high speed scanning, there's software that deals with that, like that entry level type of job, awful as it was, um, it, you know, doesn't exist, which is a, which is a great thing, actually. I'm glad that that's the case. So, but you, you got to be aware of these types of changes. I mean, I, I mean, this might sound like heresy to some other lawyers, but I think we're not far away from a world where it's like, you know, you say to your Amazon Echo device, for me an LLC, write me a will, right. draft me an NDA, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not a leap of logic that that's going to happen at some point soon, right? And lawyers will hem and haw and say like, oh, no, that can't work. No, that's not going to work. And like, we need lawyers. <laughs> What's that? And then they're going to use it. That's it. <laughs> right. It's going to happen. Right. I mean, that's what people said about legal Zoom and, you know, things like that. I mean, you know, people, you know, but it, it'll happen. It'll change. So you got to be aware of these types of changes that are happening. How interesting is that? Yeah, it's true. Yeah. So what about what business like what how what business would go to you for podcasting what could it be could it be anywhere from the you know like the college like myself could it be um other than law firms um uh, a market down the street like who would do this yeah who would do yeah this for any type of new and fun way to advertise who would do this well, um, a variety of different types of, from a business perspective, you know, they're hobbyists, um, you know, there's, there's professional, there's entertainment production companies in Hollywood that are creating podcasts. So it's, it's an emerging medium. There's a lot of changes that are happening. Um, at our company, we only really work with B2B companies. So that's law firms, consulting firms, um, uh, agencies, digital agencies a lot. We've got a Berkshire Hathaway company we're working with, um, e-commerce consultants, um, we work with companies like that, that have got a high client lifetime value, because, you know, if they go and they interview their clients, they spend a, let's say a half a year interviewing their clients, give them a great experience, have a great conversation, learn about challenges that they have. I guarantee you, you're going to experience what I did from my very first podcast, which is, you know, you have a conversation with your client, you find out what they're challenged by and some of them at the end of that conversation are going to say, hey, there's, some, there's something else you could help me with. Can you help me with this other thing? And pretty soon, look, you, you've gotten some more business out of it. So it's you're creating content, you're delivering value to an exposure to that client or referral partner or stage partner or local business or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you're building a deeper connection. And um, in many cases, if you do it right, that will lead to great things. It will lead to more referrals. It will lead to more business in the door. It will lead to more clients. It will lead to more strategic partnerships. Um, so I tell people all the time, it's, it's just, it's one of the best things that you can do. Um, and you're, and you're learning at the same time, you're educating yourself at the same time. All those things are happening at the same time. So it's really a, a good use of your time. Yeah. Meeting new people. I love that part when you have different yeah. people on your interview and you're always learning something from somebody, no matter what it is. Yeah. I mean, this conversation right now, I mean, like, you know, you, constantly it's, it's an excuse to have a conversation. It's an excuse to connect with someone and, um, and who knows where it leads. Like that's, that's what, what, what I found. I mean, lit I've literally been to people's weddings who I met connected with through podcasting. I've been to their wedding. They invited me to their wedding, you know, and like all kinds of amazing, you know, meals at conferences and strategic partnerships and, client engagements and all kinds of stuff like that. So I, I'm, I'm at first and foremost, I'm an evangelist for the medium. I tell people all the time that, you know, it's a great thing to do. And my company, we're small. We're not like a big company. We can't help every company out there. So I tell people all the time, like, I hope you will do it regardless of whether we help you, whether we work together or not, I hope you will do it. Yeah, that's incredible. And so tell us more about where we can find you. Oh, thank you. Um, Rise25.com is our website. My podcast is called Smart Business Revolution. You can check on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Amazon Music, any of those different, any of the different podcasting channels. SmartBusinessRevolution.com is also the website for my podcast. And um, you can grab me on LinkedIn, go to John Corcoran on LinkedIn um, and send me a note. I'd love to connect with anyone. And now also tell me, 
what are the next few big projects that you and your partner would like to do with Rise? Anything well, different? yeah, good question. Um, right now we're working on a book. Um, it's been a while since we put out a book. So we are actually um, going to be creating a book that uh, will be kind of sharing our approach to relationship building through podcasts. Uh, so that should be out sometime later in the year. And that's the main thing that we're focused on. Other than that, it's just... Um, you know, onboarding clients, um, building a great team, building a great remote virtual workforce and culture. Those are the things we're focused on. That's incredible. And, you know, I have a veteran series started with the Legal Networking Forum. So I'm super involved in this. We're doing it once a month. And I would love to invite you guys to join. And I'd like for you to share why I want to invite you to join. That's awesome. Yeah, no. And, and, um, I've interviewed a number of veterans on my my podcast. Uh, I think I mentioned to you before we had a, we we've had a um, a veteran entrepreneur scholarship, which was a lot of fun. Where when we were doing these in person events and we had all these amazing VIPs there, we created a scholarship where which we funded for uh, veteran entrepreneurs to come in who are more like getting started, and and we gave them access to this room full of incredible entrepreneurs. And that was really a lot of fun. So that's really cool that you're doing this veteran initiative as well. Um, you know, as veterans come back from the many different wars that have been going on over the last 20 years, um, they need our help and support. Um, on the, the scholarship side. Uh -huh. So if they go to our website, they can check it out there, rise25.com uh, slash about, they can check it out there. Um, and we have, we have a couple of different kind of charitable initiatives that we're working on at any one time. So it depends on when they go to check it out, uh, but they can go and learn more there. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Everybody thank go you. check them out. It's awesome. I love Thanks, it. Rise25. Thank you.